What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, I'm talking about the best decks in standard format of the Pokemon trading card game, with the newest set released being Battle Styles, and that is now legal for play and has been being played in online tournaments for a little over a week now. So we'll be looking at results and deck lists from these online tournaments. Before we get into the video, shout out to PoTownStore.com, the best place for you to get PTCGO codes, and be sure to use code Celio for 5% off. A special thanks to PlayLimitlessTCG.com and also Dinodata.app because without Limitless as a place to play online tournaments, we wouldn't have these results, and Dinodata.app organizes the data in a really nice way. So we'll have two kinds of information going into my top 10 decks today for the standard format in March 2021. The first is quantitative data, which will be the results from the first 10 Battle Styles legal tournaments held on Play Limitless TCG that had over 60 players enter into the tournaments. The qualitative data will be my opinion based on experience and also testing these decks and playing in the format. I want you to note that this is for the early Battle Styles metagame, and I fully expect this list to adjust and change and adapt in the next month or so. So definitely be on the lookout for the next episode of this series in about a month or two. And also keep in mind that some decks may perform better or worse based on their popularity. Players do tend to play safe and optimized decks when a new set is released, or at least this is what I have observed myself. The number one deck we'll look at today is Zashin ADP which has been around for a while, and whether you like it or not, it is a very strong deck. It is a deck that has been optimized, and is a safe deck, and is a deck that just can kind of beat most things that come its way. So Zashin ADP in these 10 tournaments we're looking at has gotten itself 50 top 32 placements, 26 top 16 placements, 16 top 8 placements, no wins yet, but a ton of placements in the top 32 to top 8. This is what a list for Zashin ADP is looking like these days, and this list is from Gabe Shumway. Um, a new addition from Battle Styles is the Empoleon V, because after Alter Creation for 160 damage, you are one-shotting Victini VMAX and Centiscorch VMAX thanks to the Water Weakness. This also includes for Escape Rope, which is a new reprint that was released and now legal for standard format, thanks to Battle Styles. Next is Victini VMAX. Uh, so these are going to be Victini VMAX variants in general. Um, as defined by Play Limitless and Dino Data, there are Victini VMAX variants left out of these results that you'll see here, but this is the bulk of Victini VMAX variants. Victini is a brand new card from Battle Styles, and it's already made a name for itself as one of the very best decks you can play in standard format right now. It has 29 top 32 placements, 20 top 16 placements, and 8 top 8 placements. So although it is brand new, it is both popular and successful right now. And we'll have two lists here to show you guys today. So this first one is my list that I played to last week's Sunday Open, held on Play Limitless, of course. It was a 300 plus player tournament, and I placed in the top 8 with this list. This has a little bit of a Mewtwo package as a backup, especially to combat Urshifu decks because they are weak to Psychic, and also to combat other Mewtwo decks since Victini VMAX is not very effective versus GX Pokemon. This is a list from Alexander Constantino with a uh, less of a Mewtwo package. There is no Mewtwo package here. A little thinner of a line for Victini VMAX, also lacking Reshizard, but making up for it with other cards like additional switch counts, uh, an additional fan, an additional Crobat, uh, additional Professor's Research for Pokegear, all in relative to my list, of course. So some slight changes, but those are kind of what Victini VMAX variants in a nutshell are looking like right now. Next, we have Picarom. Now, Picarom is a deck that many people thought would just fall off because a new good fighting type card came out, or two new good fighting type cards came out, both Rapid Strike and Single Strike Urshifu. 
That is not the case. Now you'll see that the placements for Pico Rum here are a little bit lacking compared to the previous two archetypes we just looked at, but I believe that is because Pico Rum has been less popular because people were scared off of playing it. But the placements that are here do show that you should not be scared off of playing Pico Rum because it still can fight against these new fighting decks thanks to Mewtwo and Mew and just the utter consistency and above average damage output the Pika Rom can do starting on turn one of the game sometimes, depending on if you're playing energy switch or tag switch. So Pika Rom has 16 top 32 placements, seven top 16 placements, four top eights, and one first place in the first large 10 tournaments held on play limitless for the battle styles format. So Pika Rom has been doing pretty well. It's not at the top if you only look at placements, which is why my opinion is coming into this list a little bit, because I do think Pika Rom deserves to be up here in the top five decks. This is a recent list. This is the one that actually is uh, responsible for Pika Rom's one first place in these 10 tournaments. This is from Bart Mooser. Uh, teching that Vika Volt V, which is kind of the only abnormality, Vika Volt V being teched for single prize decks, swinging for 50 and then item lock is typically pretty good against single prize decks if you knock them out and then you don't give them items to use to recover on the next turn other than that this is a pretty cut and dry pika rom list and this is exactly what you should expect to see maybe save the pika volt v next we have rapid strike urshifu the brand new face of battle styles I uh, has a ton of top 32 placements with 35 top 32s and then dwindling down to 12 top 16s and six top eights, which is still respectful, but it has not been absolutely dominating the format like some may have expected. I think this is the best Rapid Strike Urshifu list at the moment, but there's still a lot to be explored and practiced with this deck. This is a very straight and consistent version piloted and built by Caleb Rogerson, just using basic fighting and rapid strike energy, not using any other attacker other than the rapid strike Urshifu VMAX, and really not trying any of the cute stuff. No telescopic sight, no karate belt, no Cheryl. It's just pretty straightforward, built like a lot of other decks in standard, except built around Urshifu with its rapid strike energy that gives it a nice boost of uh, attack efficiency. Next, we've got Eternatus, another deck just like Picarom. We thought it was gone, but Eternatus is also adapting, whereas Picarom didn't really have to adapt. It's just still straight up good. Eternatus VMAX is adapting with Weakness Guard Energy in the lists to combat the new Urshifu decks. So it has 10 top 32 placements, 6 top 16 placements, and 6 top 8 placements. Not a ton of results just like Picarom, but... The same thing, I think people were scared off of playing this deck, and we'll see it come back a little bit at a time in the coming weeks. This is what a typical list is looking like right now. Fairly similar to the lists you were probably used to, except take out three of those basic darks for three weakness guard energies, pop in a couple XP share, which is a nice new card that this deck gains from battle styles, and you're good to go. Next is Senta Scorch, which has been a mainstay of the standard format ever since its release in Darkness Ablaze. It has 15 top 32 placements, 9 top 16 placements, 4 top 8 placements, and it will be the only deck on this list to have two first place placements out of these first 10 tournaments that we're looking at. So Senta Scorch has been very strong for quite a while. I think it's a nice, safe, fairly optimized deck that can just build up a large scent of scorch and go from there take down a lot of new inconsistent unoptimized decks that the scorch v max has really not changed too much in the past months it's still the scoop up net build with jirachis playing cramorant and rushy's art as backup which i think is the optimal way to play it some people do like to have a stamp or two and great catcher in the deck and those are really where the counts will change up but do you play fourth jirachi or do you play stamp do you play second cramorant do you play a heatran gx things like that will be where the deck really has its couple little card differences, but it's mostly set in stone to look about like this deck. 
Next is Welder Mute 2, which is a deck that just seems to pop up at the beginning of every new set release, and then it kind of dwindles away as the new decks become more optimized. We saw this with Darkness Ablaze as well, where Mute 2 Welder just popped off at the beginning of the format and then kind of shied away into tier 2-ish kind of viability. But it does have a ton of placements right now in the early days of battle styles. It has 24 top 32 placements, 11 top 16 placements, 7 top 8 placements, and 1 first place. Welder Mute 2, you will probably notice here, has only gained escape rope from battle styles. There's really no new cards here aside from battle, uh, escape rope from the new battle styles set. But Mewtwo Welder being an aggressive deck that has already been optimized can just take advantage of new decks that are kind of shaky, not playing their perfect lists yet. Also note, of course, Mewtwo and Mew hits the new Urshifus for weakness, so that's a nice addition for the card. Next is Decidueye. So Decidueye is an interesting card and an interesting deck because it comes and goes in how good it is and how great of a meta call it is based on if people will tech for it, if they will respect about they will respect the deep forest camo ability and include cards into their decks to take care of Decidueye. Decidueye has nine top 32 placements, seven top 16 placements, six top eight placements, and one first place. And it is a deck that is not popular. This deck, even at its most popular, takes up like 5% of a metagame um, on a good day. So recently, the Sidui lists have omitted Obstagoon from the deck and also Zigzagoon. So it's just straight the Sidui, Snorlax, and Mew. And I really like these list changes adapted from some Japanese lists that I've seen that were playing Big Charm and Weakness Guard Energy and Mallow and Lana. This was actually a deck that I brought up to my testing group for the Players' Cup 3 because I had seen these kind of lists from Japan. Next is Dragapult, a deck that I'm very happy is back in the meta. Now, I hope this isn't short-lived because Dragapult is back because of the decrease in popularity of Eternatus, which is the worst matchup Dragapult can come up against. But while Eternatus is on the down low, Dragapult has been seeing a fair bit of success with 19 top 32 placements, 9 top 16 placements, 5 top 8s, and 1 first place. Dragapult does not gain a ton from battle styles. Some lists are including Fan of Waves, Escape Rope, and Experience Share, which are small but still notable items in the deck list. Some decks are combining Dragapult VMAX and Urshifu VMAX for a Urshipult archetype, but I am not listing that here as the same thing as Dragapult. Dragapult also gains a good matchup in the straight Urshifu decks because it has Power Plant and Psychic uh, it hits for Psychic Weakness, so even if the Urshifus are playing Jirachi GX, you can shut that off with Power Plant and then swing for damage times two because of Weakness, and Dragapult is also resistant to the Urshifu decks. Next is Blacephalon. So Blacephalon has not really changed too much, but this is a very interesting build from Stefan Ivanov with the 2-2 Victini VMAX in it. But other than that, uh, Blacephalon has stayed the same as the Tempozard build, or you can put in these 2-2 Victini VMAX like you see here in Stefan's list. Sorry, these slides were backwards there. So Blacephalon, you saw the deck list first, and here is uh, the Blacephalon's placements slide. So Blacephalon has 10 top 32s, 7 top 16s, 4 top 8s, and 0 first places. And as I just said, you can either play the Tempozard variant, like Azul GG's PC3 list that he qualified in with, or you can play the new Stefan Ivanov build with the 2-2 Victini VMAX. I think they're both just as good as the other. We'll have to see if one ends up coming out on top. But as I've said numerous times throughout this video, we're in the early days of battle styles, and decks still have a lot of testing and optimization to go. So these are the best decks as of late March, early April 2021, in my opinion. The lower half of the list is really not in any specific order. I think the only part of the list that is in an exact order in my mind is the top four. I think ADPZ, Victini, Pikaram, and Rapid Strike Urshifu are the best decks right now, uh, and everything else is almost on even playing ground with each other. So just a quick slide here 
to show you the 10 decks, wrap them all up in a bow. If you want to screenshot this, send them to your friends, tell them to come watch the video for the deck lists. So I hope you enjoyed this video for the best decks in the Pokemon trading card game as of March 2021 with the new set Sword and Shield battle styles. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for daily Pokemon TCG content and leave a like and a comment if you did enjoy the video. Check out PotownStore.com for all of your PTCGO needs and use code CELIO for 5% off. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time here on CELIO's Network.